Murdo, I mean, first of all, can I just say, I agree with you. Yeah, great tweet. Um, great tweet. Uh, <laughs> def whatever a non-crime hate incident is, it probably isn't one of those. But what on earth is going on, on here? You know, everyone knows that this legislation is nonsense. Um, we all worried it was going to be super dangerous. But looking at it, it just seems to be a huge drain on resources when actually the police are kind of turning around going, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it either. Well, what happened to me, of course, happened before the current act came into force. It only came into force uh, a week ago today. But since the new act came in, we've had uh, the latest count, I think, 8,000 separate complaints to the police in Scotland. And the police said uh, last week, uh, before the act came in, they would investigate every single one. So they've had to take on new officers uh, on overtime, they've had to redeploy officers. There's a real concern that because police are having to spend so much time on this, they're not investigating what we would regard as proper crimes, like housebreaking or burglary or assaults or vandalism. And they're running up a huge additional bill in overtime costs. And I think what's going to happen is the great majority of these complaints, probably most of them, if not all, will be ruled as non-criminal. We saw lots of complaints last week against uh, J.K. Rowling. We even saw complaints against the First Minister of Scotland, Hamza Youssef, for a speech he made in Parliament back in 2020 that some people claimed was racist. None of these complaints are being taken forward, but the police are having to spend time investigating them. We have people on social media whipping up complaints uh, people who are political activists, who are trans rights activists, whipping up complaints. It's a complete waste of time. And unfortunately, it just means that uh, the police are not going to have the time to spend on what uh, the, the public really care about. Some of my Scottish mates are having a great time uh, reporting each other for a laugh. You know what the Scots are like. But they're making a point. They're just trying to say to Hamza Youssef, your laws, your hate laws are ludicrous. Now, in... Uh, what I'd like to ask you, uh, Murdo, is what you think these hate, li hate laws are for. So last week, we had uh, J.K. Rowling saying, basically, if you're a trans woman, you're a bloke. And then he named about sort of six or seven trans women in Scotland and said they're all men. Uh, so you would have thought that might break the hate laws. Uh, guess what? The police had a look at it and say this does not reach the criminal threshold. Therefore, she didn't break the hate laws. And then we have your situation where you made that rather uh, amusing and accurate tweet, choosing to identify as non-binary is as valid as identifying as a cat. Uh, that got recorded, although they didn't take your personal details, that was recorded as a non-crime hate incident. Uh, as I keep saying, I don't know what the police are doing dealing with non-crime incidents. I thought they were supposed to deal with incidents that were actually crimes, but that's another issue. But if they're recording you or your tweet as a non-crime hate incident, why on earth are they not recording J.K. Rowling's tweet saying that trans women are blokes as non-crime hate incidents? Or, perhaps more pertinently, why are they recording my tweets uh, as an opposition member of Parliament and not doing the same to the SNP First Minister of Scotland for his comments. Now, you might say that reeks of political bias on the part of the police in Scotland, that they're happy to take action in relation to an opposition member of parliament, but they're not in relation to the First Minister. I've been asking the police these questions for days now. I can't get any answers from them as to what their policy now is on recording these so-called non-crime hate incidents. And the, the police in Scotland, um, operate this policy which was dumped by the police in England uh, more than a year ago because there was a case in the, in the Court of Appeal, a retired uh, police officer called Harry Miller who tweeted something gender critical. The police in England recorded that as a non-crime hate incident. He took them to court and the Court of Appeal ruled that police collecting this information was unlawful and the police in England had to change their policy. The police in Scotland, for reasons best known to themselves, didn't change their policy. Well, I think they're going to have to now, not least because they don't seem to be applying it on a, on a uniform and equal-handed basis.
I mean, we, we can laugh about this in terms of people going down to various snitch centres on mushroom farms and in sex shops to dob on <laughs> someone at their dinner table who said something or the other about someone or the other. And also the fact that the police are being inundated with everyone coming up with McNonsense to report. But if you have got a non-crime hate incident to your name, is that on some sort of record? Is there a more sinister undertone here that if you're going for a job or trying to get a loan or getting a, well, you know, a sort of background records check because you want to go into teaching or work in a Sunday school, that this could actually come back to haunt you? Well, that's the concern. And there is, some, there is some suggestion that if someone were to do an enhanced disclosure check to the police, which is what you require in a position such as a teacher where you're working with children, these incidents could show up on that disclosure check. So potentially, it could have an impact on somebody's employment prospects. In my own case, what happened was the individual who complained against me, who, who turns out was a, was a trans rights activist, took the fact that the police had recorded a hate incident in my case, and then went to the <sighs> Ethical Standards Commissioner, who's the individual who polices the conduct of parliamentarians and said, in effect, the police have said, Mr. Fraser's guilty of a hate incident. I want you to take action against him. Now, Fortunately, in my case, the Ethical Standards Commissioner threw that complaint out and said it was nonsense. But, uh, you know, if that uh, is, is a potential consequence of the recording of these hate incidents, that is something that really should concern all of us. Last question, Murdo. I mean, this is a palpable shambles. Down here in London, we can almost sense what's going on in Scotland. Uh, 8,000 reports, as you say, they're coming in at the rate of one every minute. Uh, and uh, the coppers are having to bring in loads of officers on overtime just to deal with the bureaucracy of it all. I mean, Hamza Youssef has made a real mess of this. What is his obsession with uh, legislating against what people might say in their own houses or what I might say to you in the pub? What is his... Why does he want to crack down on people just for things they might say in the pub? Uh, he's not uh, a particularly liberal man, is he, to say the least? Well, what he would say is, you know, there's a rising tide of hate in Scotland that needs to be clamped down on. Now, you know, I've lived in Scotland all my life. It's not my perception that Scotland is a hateful society or any more hateful than anywhere else. Um, I, I'm not sure where the evidence is that supports the idea that you know people in Scotland are exceptionally hateful to each other. Um, I, I, you know, Scotland is is a country where over many hist many decades, many centuries, the, the principles of free speech have been upheld. Scotland was the home of the Enlightenment. It was great thinkers of the time who came forward and debated ideas. I think it's really sad that we now have a, a government that seems to be hostile to the idea of free speech an open debate and is actively me. encouraging people to grass up others yeah. who are saying things that they don't like. That's not the country I want to be living actively in. Actively encouraging hate, I would suggest, by doing right. so. By the, by the way, uh, Murdo, when I come up to Scotland, I sense no hate whatsoever. One of the friendliest countries in the world. Great people who don't deserve this idiot as the First Minister. They really don't. He acts like he's uh, running North Korea or something. Uh, Murdo, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm surprised Murdo. you go there if it's not brimming with hatred. I thought that was yeah, your yeah, favourite thing. I only go to places <laughs> that, as I always say, I think hate's had a very bad press. <laughs> My favourite emotion by a mile.